Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Health Animated. On this podcast, we strive to make health information accessible. My name is Alex. And I'm Danielle. To our returning listeners, thanks for your ongoing support. So today we're really excited to welcome and introduce you to Jeff, a nurse working on the front lines of a COVID cohort unit. So I've been looking forward to doing this interview as one of our goals on this podcast is to chat with our fellow healthcare providers. And we know that during this pandemic, nurses have been playing a key role in the care for patients and in our vaccination efforts against COVID. So today, we're going to show some love for our nurses by shining a spotlight on them. We'll learn more about what they do and how COVID-19 has changed their practice. A little bit about Jeff. Jeff is a recent grad, and in fact, he graduated during the pandemic, and he currently works at an acute medicine stroke unit, which was eventually converted to a COVID cohort. And one fun fact about him, if you ever meet him in person, you'll notice that his eyebrows are always on point. Welcome, Jeff. Thanks for having me on the show, guys. Yeah, I'd say I'm actually pretty renowned for my eyebrows, whether it be in line at Subway or while giving an a report to a doctor. I've definitely received a lot of compliments. And uh, yeah, so if you ever see me around, feel free to ask me for some advice. (laughs) Nice. And I think like right now, eyebrows is probably one of the only things that you can see outside of the mask, right? Totally. I do this thing now where like, actually, I would say most people that wear makeup generally do with masks is we kind of just do like the eyes and above. So if I remove my mask, not so pretty. But while I'm wearing my mask, I'm definitely slaying. Before we get started with the tough interview questions, I think the first thing we want to find out more is your background and what kind of made you choose a career in nursing? Yeah, so actually I was born in northern BC uh, in like a rural village of like 2,000 people. So now living in Vancouver, it's definitely been a big change. And uh, for the reasons why I applied into nursing, I think when people pursue a career in healthcare, Um, The simplest explanation is because they want to help people. And I think you have to look past that and ask yourself, how is it that you want to help people? So it was really important for me to really understand the different roles of the different healthcare providers so that when choosing a career, I knew that it was the best fit for me. In doing so, what I did was I set up a volunteering gig where I actually volunteered at one of the local hospitals just to gain further insight into what the different roles were. And I think what drew me so much to nursing was really how much time we spend with our patients. Nursing has a unique opportunity of really being this keystone team member that really connects all of the different team members. And what our role is, is to really be an advocate for our patients. And we do that by continually monitoring and assessing our patients, you know, conversing and developing care plans with the different team members so that we can really address the care needs of all of our patients from every perspective. That's actually really cool how you really took the time to not only understand that A, you find enjoyment with interacting with patients and taking care of the health needs, but also B, figuring out exactly which path to take, whether it's being a nurse, a pharmacist like us, or even a doctor. And and it's really cool that you just took the opportunity to clearly figure that path for yourself. Um, And especially for someone who's so young, I think that's quite admirable. Yeah, I think it's I think you touched on a really good point too, Jeff, about being an advocate for the patient. I think that, um, you know, when you're admitted to hospital as a patient, it can be quite overwhelming. So I think it's really important to have a patient advocate and a nurse at bedside who is there to kind of explain what's going on with your um, care. You touched on the fact that patient interaction is one of the things that you value the most in your job. Um, Can you tell us a little bit about how that's changed since the pandemic? So one of the biggest changes that has come with a pandemic is really a change in narrative from this idea of putting the patient first to now beginning to put ourselves first. And what that looks like is, you know, making sure that we take the time to, you know, properly use our PPE and taking the time to, you know, do effective hand hygiene. But one of the downsides of that has been really that we've been taking longer and longer to get to our patients. So, you know, in these types of emergent situations that we encounter in our day to day practice, we have to take the time to make sure that we're protecting ourselves. And when like a patient's bed alarm goes off or, you know, like someone's call bell rings, like we can't just jump in in the same way that we used to. We really have Mm -hmm. to take the time to put on PPE to protect ourselves. With PPE, I think it's been challenging too, just picking up on some of the cues. 
um, from a nursing perspective, that must be a lot more challenging for you because oftentimes, like, you know, facial expressions are just so key in, in your in your role. Like, how has that been during this pandemic? So as nurses, one of our most valuable assets is really developing and cultivating a therapeutic relationship with our patients. And one of the greatest barriers to that has been our use of PPE, because for a lot of our patients, you know, they don't get to see our faces, they don't get to really get to know who we are. So it takes more time for us to build and develop those relationships. And I think sometimes it can affect the patient experience because it can be, it can feel so isolating to have every single person that comes to visit you be, you know, gowned up and masked up and, you know, essentially like you feel stigmatized in a way. Jeff, this might be a kind of a silly question, but I think some of our listeners are probably interested in knowing. So when you're on the ward, I guess you're wearing full PPE, um, but the patients that you're caring for, are they wearing any PPE for themselves or are they kind of just in a, are they in shared rooms, single rooms? What does that kind of look like? So when you come onto the unit, things definitely look a little bit different. Um, In terms of our patients, they don't actually wear masks themselves. The only time we expect patients to wear masks is when they're going for transport, like for a diagnostic, for example. Um, Outside of that, we try to make the patients as comfortable as possible. Obviously, they're going through a really difficult time, and I could imagine that they are could feel even further stigmatized if they were, you know, to have to wear masks. Um, And because of that, really, like we wear full PPE so that the patients don't have to wear masks themselves. I think that was actually really well said. You painted a really good picture of what patients can expect to see if they do, um, you know, find themselves in the hospital. And one thing I'm kind of curious about is with, with the unit that you're on right now, which, which is used for uh, many of your COVID patients or COVID pending patients, what does your day-to-day look like? So in the day in the life of a nurse, uh, when we get to our unit, we begin by changing into new scrubs. There's a card available. You essentially put on scrubs, you put on a hair net, you put on shoe covers, you grab your N95 and your face shield. Um, and once you're all protected up, then we meet up for rounds, which is basically when we do a shift report between the night shift and the day shift. At that report, we get a sit down and kind of chat up with the other nurses and figure out kind of what happened overnight and kind of what the plan is for the day for each of the patients. This is a really vital part in our day because this is an opportunity for us to get an overview of all of the patients. Typically we work, um, we have an assignment of our own, but when our partners go on break, we also manage their assignments. So it's really important in these like emergent situations that you kind of have a general idea of kind of each patient's care needs. After report, uh, we go into assessments. So we'll go into patient rooms and we've been actually been uh, trying to consolidate a lot of our activities to minimize how often we're going into patient rooms. So traditionally, what you would do is you would go in, do your assessments, such as your vitals, come back outside, grab your meds, go back in, give your meds. But this time, we're really trying to combine everything together. So typically, we'll bring in breakfast, we'll bring in medications, um, and we'll do our assessments and really try to tackle any patient care needs in that moment. After that initial assessment, um, we'll come back outside. We'll start to do our charting and flow sheets, um, something you'll come to understand with nurses that we're often writing. I think that's something that's quite surprising, but we have this kind of idea that if you didn't chart it, you didn't do it. So we spend a lot of our time kind of documenting our efforts and interventions so that um, if someone happens to come by, they can check out and see what we've been up to for the day. And after charting and everything, we go on our first break and essentially the rest of the day falls. So we kind of just go throughout the day, um, administering medications as scheduled, um, you know, handling any emergent situations that come up, and really like sending patients for diagnostics. Wow, that sounds like it can be quite a busy day. And I think, Danielle, you're probably going to jump on this point as well. But as pharmacists, we have the exact same belief system where if you don't write it down, if you don't document it, it never happened. So it's great that you brought it up. It's like if the tree falls in the forest and no one charted on it, did it actually fall? So Jeff, you you mentioned that it's that you've had to consolidate a lot of the activities to kind of avoid going in and out. So what does that in and out process look like? Yeah, so um, essentially 
Prior to entering the room, a patient call bell goes on, for example. We have an overhead intercom system, which can allow us to communicate with the patient uh, through the intercom. However, most of the time, patients don't feel comfortable talking into the open or they don't really understand what's going on. So we'll just try to peek our heads in to see if we can figure out what their needs are so that we can bring all the necessary supplies in. Um, and prior to entering the room, uh, what the PPE looks like that we don, uh, we would put on gloves, we would put on gowns. We are always wearing face shields and masks at this point. So um, it's really just those two additional pieces of PPE. So when we're finished in a patient room, um, the next step is doffing our PPE. And this is a really vital step in how we protect ourselves because we are now potentially contaminated. Prior to exiting a patient room, a vital step is to doth our PPE. And when we're doffing, it's really important to be cognizant of what is the most likely to be contaminated and what is the most likely to be clean. Um, in doing so, that really guides our procedure. So we begin by removing our gloves because typically those are the most likely to be soiled. Um, in between all of these steps, we're always using hand hygiene. And after we remove our gloves, we remove our gowns next. Traditionally, you would remove your masks and face shields as well, but because we're working on a COVID cohort unit, our masks and face shield remain on at all times. It must have taken a little bit of time to get used to all of the steps with donning and doffing PPE. Um, I'm sure now you're a pro, but how, how did that become kind of second nature? Do they have any kind of education sessions can you walk us through that process? Yeah, definitely. Uh, donning and doffing has always been a challenge. I think um, everyone has their kind of own ways they do things, but I think it's really important, particularly during this pandemic, to make sure that we're doing the procedure correctly. So what they had is they actually had education sessions where we'd have in-services where people would come in to provide education on how to don and doth. We actually would line up and then you they would watch you put everything on and then watch you take everything off and if you made a mistake you had to go to back to the like to the end of the line and to do it all over again so in that way i feel like it was like a little painful that's an interesting approach it it really takes the walk of shame to a whole new level because i certainly hope that i get it right the first time otherwise i'm gonna have to walk <laughs> all the way to the back of the line and redo it but you know what i think it speaks to the importance right like because this is the difference between life and death i think a lot of our listeners and certainly myself we appreciate you walking us through your day-to-day -day life as a nurse especially on a covid cohort unit so with that being said what would you say are some of the biggest challenges that you faced during this pandemic and it can be um, in the context of working in a unit or it could be outside of work I think one of the biggest challenges has been um, navigating this idea of protecting other people. I think working on a COVID cohort unit has been isolating because, you know, you have this inherent fear that you might potentially put those that you love most at risk because of your job. And, you know, especially when I began working on the COVID cohort unit, I think I was acutely aware of everything I did from, you know, what I did with my clothes, how I washed it, you know, like my procedure for when I came home to like how I would shower and try to minimize any risk because at the end of the day, I think working in healthcare is a challenge enough, let alone without the fear that your occupation could put other people at risk. Thanks for sharing your your perspective. We often think of our healthcare providers as being strong individual and strong advocate for patients and for the public. So the fact that you uh, were brave enough to share that you, you, you have this fear, I think is, is quite admirable. Yeah, thank you so much, Jeff, for opening up about that. I'm wondering, what are you guys doing to support the patients on the unit to make them feel less isolated while in hospital? Yeah, so because of the pandemic, um, the hospitals have been having to minimize the amount of visitors that we have and really any time that family or friends are able to visit are for essential visits and what those look like are, you know, if a patient's close to passing or if we need someone for a particular task. And because of that, it's been really difficult, I think, for patients to uh, connect with their family and loved ones. And we've been really trying our best to provide ways for them to have those connections, whether that be setting up a FaceTime call or a Zoom meeting. Um, 
or just something that lets them know that they're not alone. So I think that's been really challenging for me as a nurse because you do get to see the effects of kind of isolation on our patients. As we discussed earlier, we really try to consolidate how much time we spend in the room. And because of that, we don't get to go in just for a chat. Anything that we do is very intentional. And I think because of that, it can be hard to watch your patients struggle and to know that there's not much more that you can do for them. Wow. Yeah, because I think you you mentioned this earlier that you went into nursing because of that human connection. So and that you love, you know, spending time with your patients. So I can, can't even imagine the emotional toll that it's taken on you in the last um, few months. Have you done anything in particular when you go home to kind of cope with these feelings? Yeah, I'm actually really lucky to say that I have an amazing support system around me. Some of my best friends are nurses as well. So just being able to chat with people that really understand kind of what your experience is and Um, kind of what I do in my spare time when I'm home is to really just decompress as much as I can. I love to cook. I love to spend time with my partner. Um, one of my favorite activities is going to the farmer's market if possible. And I just love to kind of get out and take my mind off things and appreciate the small things. I mean, we talked about this in one of our episodes, but it's so important to give yourself permission and take time to relax and to decompress and to take care of yourself just to kind of round out the conversation and to balance the perspectives. I know we talked about some of the challenges that you faced during the pandemic, um, but what would you say is one of your favorite parts of being a nurse? I think one of the most rewarding parts about being a nurse is really cultivating those relationships with your patients. I think in particular, there's just this really fuzzy feeling that you get when you know that your patient looks forward to when you're on shift or maybe when you're talking to one of the family members and they're excited to know that you're the nurse working with their patient that day. So um, yeah, definitely for me, it comes down to those relationships with patients. Aw, that's really touching, Jeff. That sounds like it's the... um... The part that most of our healthcare heroes are really enjoying is that patient interaction. And I know Alex and I were talking about this earlier, and I think that was part of what we really liked when we were working with patients as well. So, Jeff, since you've started working, what's something that you've learned about yourself through work that you didn't already know? I think if you ask the people that know me really well, I think something that they might see I struggle with is the unknown. I'm known to be somewhat of a planner and because of that I used to struggle a lot with changes to my plans and something that I've come to learn about myself especially within nursing is that nursing never really goes as planned and as and as a result I've had to learn how to adapt and how to handle emergent situations and through that I think I've become better at managing problems. Um, yeah, Jeff, you brought up a really good point because I think just working in patient care, things don't always go according to plan. Um, how do you kind of, um, handle that on a day to day when you've got a full patient load, um, when things just kind of pop up out of nowhere, what's your process for dealing with those, um, issues or setbacks? One of the difficulties as a nurse, when you're managing a full patient assignment is having to navigate how you prioritize patient care needs. And two skills that we heavily rely on are time management and prioritization. So throughout the day, you're constantly evaluating and assessing your patient's care needs to determine who you need to prioritize so that you can address patient's care needs in a timely manner. Yeah, I would completely agree with you, Jeff. I think that time management and prioritization are just critical in healthcare and especially in nursing. So what other attributes do you think are really important uh, from a nursing perspective? I think some skills that lend themselves to nursing are being an effective communicator, being a team player, being able to critically think and to make decisions. Funny enough, I actually think I cultivated a lot of these skills as a server. That's actually a really interesting point because back when I was managing a pharmacy, when I started to get resumes coming in for um, pharmacy assistant positions, I'm always drawn towards those who have experiences in service industry because I know that they're most likely going to be a great communicator, they know how to be a team player, and they're able to prioritize the work because oftentimes you can be very busy and it can be very overwhelming. Um, 
Speaking of cultivating a variety of experiences and identifying some of those important skills, what kind of advice do you have for our listeners out there who may be considering a career in nursing? Um, I think my piece of advice would be to really look at the different programs that are out there and to figure out what type of learner you are. For example, I enrolled in an accelerated program because I knew that as an adult learner, I would be able to be self-sufficient with my learning and that I really just needed the nitty gritty and I was ready to join the workforce. So Jeff, you did an accelerated program for nursing. Um, What was the most valuable thing that you learned during your training that you took forward with you into practice? I think the most valuable thing that I learned through my program was that you're never going to know everything and that it's important to remain humble and to be willing to learn from those around you. I completely agree with you. I think in healthcare, just the nature of healthcare itself, it's constantly evolving. And I think that you have to be comfortable with learning every day. I think every day I go to work, I learn something new uh, without fail. So speaking of becoming a lifelong learner, Jeff, can you walk us through some of the career options that are available to nurses? Nursing provides the unique opportunity to advance your career, whether that be through obtaining a specialty certificate, uh, for example, in labor and delivery or in critical care. And uh, something I think that people don't actually know about is that health authorities can sponsor you and pay for your education. So that'll cover things from textbooks to tuition to clinical fees while paying you full time salary. Oh, that's really that's really cool, Jeff. Um... So given that there's just so many opportunities for nursing, what are your future career goals with nursing? I actually have some exciting news to share. I was recently sponsored for a seat in the emergency certificate program. So I'll be transitioning into a new role in the emergency department in the upcoming months. Yeah, Jeff's going to be working at my hospital now. So when this whole pandemic's done, we're going to have to get lunch together one day. Aren't you jealous, Alex? (laughs) Uh, A little bit, but I'm happy working from home. We can have Zoom hangouts, so I won't be missing out on too much. So besides having lunch with me, Jeff, what else are you looking forward to doing when this pandemic's over? I'm really looking forward to just spending some money. (laughs) I think as a student, you're used to like really penny pinching and I haven't been able to reap the benefits of a full-time salary yet. So yeah, I'm just really looking forward to going on vacation, maybe staying at a three-star hotel, you know, just really treating myself. I think you could do better than three-star hotel. You, you, could, you can go for the five-star. So I'm going to bounce that question back to you, Danielle. Oh, I also am looking forward to traveling. I'm hoping for, uh, yeah, I'm hoping for some sandy beaches in my future. Okay, guys, so where's our next trip going to be? I want to go to Hawaii. Oh, me too. I love Hawaii. (laughs) Oh my god, same. It's so nice. I just want poke from Hawaii. (laughs) Oh my god, did you hear we made poke the other day? I saw it. Your Instagram story was amazing. Since you mentioned making poke, I think there's like two camps when it comes to making food. So do you consider yourself as a cook or more of a baker? I think that's actually evolved over time. I think when I was younger, I definitely identified as a baker. Maybe that's because I had more of a sweet tooth. Um, but now I'd say I identify more of a cook. Like one of my favorite things about work is just like looking forward to those meals. So yeah, I definitely <laughs> spend a lot more time cooking. So you say you look forward to lunchtime. <laughs> Basically <laughs> always hungry. <laughs> so yeah, that's interesting, Jeff. So uh, those 12 hour shifts, do you, do you have the energy to make food after that? I'm actually really lucky and I have um, a really great service called mom and basically she (laughs) does my laundry, she packs my lunches. At the start of the week she actually asks what I want to eat and then um, she'll cook all those things and like when I get home she'll like wash my my, like Tupperware and then pack them with new food. So yeah, I recommend subscribing. The perks of living at home. Thank you so much, Jeff, for taking the time to meet with us today and to share your experiences as a nurse, um, especially during this pandemic. I think it's been really eye-opening for both Alex and I, and I'm sure it's been eye-opening for our listeners as well. Also, on behalf of both Alex, myself, and um, and our listeners at Health Animated, I think we just all want to thank you for the amazing work that you're doing on the front lines. Um, We really need nurses that are like you who care so profoundly for their patients and we're so lucky to have you. I just want to say thank you as well for this amazing opportunity. I think it's so cool what you guys do 
and I'm really excited to see the final product. Yeah, it's been a blast. We had so much fun interviewing you, and it's been a pleasure just chatting with you. And good luck with your new job. Thanks. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to a very special episode today where we had Jeff come to talk about the day in the life of a nurse. If you guys enjoyed this interview, please let us know. And if there's any other follow-up questions that you might have, leave us a comment or even email us. And if you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe. Also, you can find us on our other social media platforms by searching at Health Animated. We look forward to connecting with you. Thanks so much and bye Bye for for now.